go. Oops, I, I thought you meant we were starting the run. Whoops. I thought you were counting me down to start time. <laughs> Should've gave me a warning. We do have, I believe, Chad has hold of my FFC emotes now, so they can go crazy with them. <laughs> there you go. There's the battery. Let's change it here first, and then you're good to go. Alright, I'm good to start now, I'm assuming. Uh, not no yet. Ah, oh, dang. Okay, now the, now the name's good on the layouts. Okay. Huh? Alrighty. Give us countdown. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Alright, so this would be an 80% speedrun of Pokemon Diamond. Now, you might have noticed I was on the Trainer ID screen to start the run, and there is a reason for that because to start off this run, you have to do a frame perfect input as part of the RNG manipulation I just mentioned, and that can take quite a bit to get, or quite a while to get, and each time you miss that input, it's about a min half lost. So, I started time at that specific screen, just so we wouldn't have to sit through that. So now the second part of the RNG manipulation is in play, and it's this movement that I'm doing right now in Twin Leaf. Because one of the things that affects the RNG, which is a fancy term for luck in this game, is or is the NPCs that you can see in Twin that you can see in Twin Leaf, and. But the thing with the movement of the NPCs is that their movement is dependent on your movement. So if you move in the exact same way every time, the NPCs move in the exact same way every time. And when the NPCs move in the exact way every time, you'll get the same RNG or luck each run. And we're doing this because we need to get a starter upcoming here with very good stats in order to destroy everything in the run, pretty much. There we go. And once we transition into Verity Lake Front, we'll be good. Alright. Now we have a little cutscene here before we get the starter. Am I going to use a top percentage Rattata? No. Rattatas are unfortunately not used in this run. Sorry to disappoint. Don't even wear shorts. <laughs> yes, I mean I mean no shorts scrub. Is my name Joey? No. Anyway, we have we have this first wild battle here of the run, and it'll be with this wild Starly. And this is just your standard run-of-the-mill first Pokemon battle where you spam tackle, in this case scratch. But there's an odd little thing with this fight, the crits are essentially disabled, so any growl that the Starly decides to use means I lose one turn because of the lowered attack. In this case he didn't use it, so it's a two turn. Simple as that, we just use scratch two times. Alright, so I got I already have my very good starter, but the manipulation is not actually over. There's additional manipulation we can do after getting the starter, where if I perform it successfully, I will get no wild encounters up until Orberg City, which is where the first gym will be. It's pretty tough movement though, because it's over a much longer stretch of time and it has to be pretty spot on. So I'll attend the movement just so you guys can see what it looks like. But more than likely I'll fail it early on. Let's really get to see what the movement looks like at least. Am I a youngster? You can say that. Let's 
so we'll have a little talk with our mom here where she basically says we should go to the lab to talk to the professor. You know, just standard stuff in Pokemon games to go to the lab and talk to the professor. But right here we get a very important item for going fast, of course, which is the running shoes. And it'll be important for this movement we're about to do. Alright, I want to concentrate on this movement for a little bit. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Alright, that looks good. Alright, cool. That's the first part done. There's a lot more we still have to do, though. And before Diamond Pro Remake announcement, that's honestly what I'm hoping for with the Direct. It'll happen when I get to, I think, Mars or so, at about the 40 minute mark. It starts at 9, and about 38 minutes. Alright, so, I'm going to name Chimchar a very special name, and, yeah. There you go. Let's see those dash ages go crazy. There might be a bit of a delay, but it's fine. <laughs> Anyway, we have our start now, and we're going to go out with Lucas, and he's going to teach us, or give us a tutorial on the various facilities, like the Poké Center and the Poké Mart. And we'll actually be going into the Mart, and we want to buy a few healing items. We want to buy seven potions, just in case we take a lot of damage. And par paralyze two Paralyzed Seals, because there are there's one fight later on that could potentially paralyze us to all heck. And cause us to eat and just eat through our revive seeds. Revive seeds. Well, I'm talking about a different game. Paralyzed seals. I mean. Here we go. Potions to heal. In case I get hit. And paralyzed seals for a later fight. That'll be about 40 minutes in. So I need to concentrate on the movement again. Alright. And here we'll be getting the town map because we need to give it to our rival that you may have seen in the intro. The thing with the rival is that he really likes to fine us. Like, already at the beginning of the game, he fined us 10 million Poké Dollars. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna raise that much money, but we'll probably get there. That's just how Barry is. for me pretty much. Alright, got that. Good. Okay. <clears throat> yes, there we go. People are getting used to my weeb FFC emotes. If you failed to be estimate, you'd be wearing shorts for future marathon runs. Uh, this shouldn't go over estimate, but maybe. Anyway, this cutscene after the catching tutorial is a bit unlike any other cutscene in the game, because normally in every other cutscene in the game, the RNG or luck freezes essentially and doesn't advance. In the cutscene after this though, it does, so we have to try to match as fast as we can. 
in order to not get different energy and what we need for this manipulation, and of course get a bunch of encounters as a result of messing up the manipulation. I also need to refer to my a map up, up for the movement that I have here really quick. Just hold it up right now. Didn't I pick him chart? Yeah. Because he's a very good starter for the early game. That was very pad mashing there. I messed it up, frick. <laughs> well, it's dead. <laughs> That's fine though. Uh, get mis messing up the RNG manipulation like I did just there doesn't necessarily mean the run's over. It just means I'll get a few extra encounters up until Warburg. Alright. And more straightforward battles where we spam scratch. This guy can, this Starly here can be a troll because he can spam quick attack, which does exactly six damage to us. Uh, because I manipulate the tomb chart and I know exactly what stats are, I know exactly how much damage it's going to take from certain attacks. In this case, I know it's going to take four damage from tackle and six damage from quick attack from the Starly. I right there, I just got tackled, or the Starly just used tackle on me, and I took exactly four damage. And right there, I just got quick attack. And I took exactly six damage. Ooh, that's I'm I'm not gonna risk it in the mini pool. I was thinking for a second maybe I could just go for it and use another scratch. But I was already in red health there, so I didn't wanna risk it. The game the bow music is louder than you are. Well I already turned it down, so I should solve it. Should be a bit better now. Just let me know if it's too quiet or something. But that should be better. And being at the health I am right now is nice for this fight because on this second Pokemon I'll be in Blaze. And the reason I want to be in Blaze is that when you're in Blaze, uh, I'll explain Blaze actually. When you're in Blaze, yeah. Wait. Yeah. But to explain Blaze, when you're below one third of your health, all of your special type moves, in this case fire type moves, will get a 50% power boost. So, for example, Ember is normally 40 power, I think, in this gen. But because of the 50% boost from Blaze, it becomes 60 power. So right there, I just got the blaze, and I'll be able to potentially one-shot this next Badoof with Ember because of the bonus power from Blaze. I'm delivering Bla Ember now at level seven. There we go. So let's hope we get a one-shot, because usually this is a one-shot if I'm in Blaze. And in that case, I got it, so that's good. Alright, so since I messed up the manipulation, there's one encounter I hope I don't get. And so far, we haven't gotten it. Um, there is a Shinx you can't... There's a chance that you can encounter a Shinx in this grass. And we don't want Shinx because the Shinx, getting a Shinx encounter wastes time because it produces the extra text saying Shinx has cut your starter's attack with Intimidate. I like it, Jazz. So we don't, basically we don't want to get a Shinx encounter so we don't see that extra text. But so far we haven't gotten it, so that's good. And the thing with this fight is that bl having Blaze for it doesn't change anything, because it's a two hit no matter what. After this fight, I will heal, because I want to be at at least 20 health for these next couple of fights.
No encounters? Okay, didn't get an encounter in that patch of grass, at least. Alright, so we just entered Jiva Life, and this is where we're going to get a certain TM that is very useful for the run, and it's called Hidden Power. And the thing with Hidden Power is that the type and power of Hidden Power is based on your starter stats. And with the starter stats with this manipulated gym jar I have, it will have a hidden power grass type, grass type, yeah, grass type hidden power with a base power of 69. And that'll be very useful for the first gym because the first gym is rock, so tweak the grass. So I'll just be able to destroy it. Uh oh. Uh, I did not heal before this fight. But luckily I pressed B to say no so I can heal. I meant to heal before this fight, but I forgot on accident. There we go. But yeah, hidden power basically very powerful move. Very useful for this run, at least for the early part of the run. In this first half hour, so we'll do these two battles together. And these are straightforward battles, like the early trainer battles that you saw me do on Route 202 earlier. Because it's scratch, because it's because it takes two scratches to kill them. Then power there usually does eight or nine health. Like I said, I, because I manipulate the chimchar, I know exactly how much damage it's going to take from certain attacks. Exactly, but I think this Amber does six or seven health with hidden power. It's more likely around six or so. Oh, it does eight apparently. Well, I'm wrong. I lied. <laughs> apparently, that's the only one where I don't know how much health it will do to me. Alright, so now we have Hidden Power. And after this, we'll be going outside and talking to a few clowns because reasons. The actual reason why we'll be talking to those clowns is because there will be a. There's an optional side quest you can take in this game where if you do it, you will get an extra. or a key item called the Poke Etch. And that will be very important for a glitch that will be. for the glitch that we'll be doing at the end because. For the glitch at the end, we need to walk a specific, like, very specific amount of tiles. And there's this counter, and there's a tile counter on the poke catch, Or step counter on the poke catch rather. So we can use that for the glitch at the end to count how many steps we're taking. But to do that, we need to talk to these clowns to get coupons for the poke catch. And if I was doing the no encounter movement by this point... I would take a specific order in, in talking to these clowns, but because I messed up the manipulation, I'm just gonna do them in order. No, I'm not bullying the clowns. We just had a polite quiz game. What are you talking about? <laughs> Alright, so this is where Hidden Power gets used for the first time. Uh, not on this first Pokemon, which is a Starly. We used two embers to kill it, but on this next Pokemon, we will. Nerd confirmed for Cloud Bully doesn't even wear shorts. <laughs> Exactly. 
Because apparently I'm a clown bully now. <laughs> oh, wait, I actually forgot to teach him power. Hmm. Uh. Well. <laughs> uh. Don't worry, I can make this work. This. Okay. Well, this could potentially be bad. But this shouldn't be too terrible. Because I believe the pebble could just repeatedly use pound. Alright, so that has never happened before in a run, by the way. I completely forgot to teach hidden power before this fight. <laughs> That's definitely something for the books, right there. But that's okay, I'll just teach it after this fight. Clown Boy Zero Distractions 1. <laughs> yes, you have successfully distracted me from teaching him power. Congratulations. Now we'll teach it. Wouldn't have happened to you or shorts. <laughs> yeah, shorts determine whether or not you finish your run. Be careful, we'll be on the top row of grass tunnels there because I went on down the middle row of grass and I accidentally hit that optional that you saw just below me. Which wasted a lot of time, basically. Now in the cave, we'll be getting Rock Smash. And we won't be using it much in combat, and we won't be using it much in the overworld either, because it's just not very powerful. There's a potential trainer that I might have to do later, if things go awry, or I'll have to use Rock Smash, but hopefully that doesn't happen. What IVs do I have? I don't remember off the top. I don't remember the IVs off the top of my head. And since Gnome just mentioned in chat, might as well explain what IVs are really quick as best as I can. Uh, IVs are basically this number that's randomly determined from 0 to 31. And the higher the number, the more your stats will grow. So let's say for example I had a 31 IV in attack. That would mean I have I'd have 13 attack at level 5 when I get it. I don't remember the IVs off the top of my head with this chimchar though. I'd have to look at some note. I have to look at notes to see what the IVs are. All right, so the leader to the gym leader for the city is down here in the mines. So we have to go talk to him to be able to f fight him later. I'm going to the left here because I need an escape rope in order to get out a bit faster. And of course I get an encounter on the same file as when I grab the escape rope. Talk to Roark, not the rock. <laughs> Pokeball was actually a Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. Johannian is correct in that sense. Oh, didn't mean to look at the trainer ID. I meant to look, use the escape rope. There we go. I actually want to heal before I go to Roark really quick. 
Because you don't, I don't think you necessarily need to be at full health for the fight, but I prefer to be at full health for the fight. So I'm gonna heal right now. Alright, so I'll be avoiding... Whoops, if I can do movement correctly. Here we go. I'll be avoiding those two trainers because I don't need to with my manipulate. I don't need to fight them with my manipulate chimichar. If I was doing a no manipulation kind of run, I would fight those two optionals to be evolved for this gym leader fight. But for a manipulate route, we don't need it. Alright, so this fight is straightforward. We just spam him power throughout the entire thing. But. There'll be. Yeah, it's. Hidden power throughout the whole thing, pretty much. But we'll be fight. But the last Pokemon we'll be fighting in this fight is a Prinidos. And the potentially bad thing about Prinidos is that it uses head. It likes to use headbutt. Um, but. Uh, uh, but. Uh, yeah, Headbutt has a chance to flinch you, and the Kranios likes to use it. But with this little strategy, on this turn of the fight, on these next few turns of the fight, we will avoid that potentially being a problem entirely. So right here, I will use in power, and that will cause him to go into heal range. Right there, he just got no health. And he'll use either Leer Pursuit or Hidden Power, since that's the three moves he has. In that case, he used Leer, which he almost never uses. And right there, he just healed the potion, so he'll use another Hidden Power. And on this turn, he does not use any moves, we just outspeed him. So we use another Hidden Power, and we kill him. And that's this, and that's the Roar fight. Gen 4 Gym Leer music? Yes, it is indeed Craigasm. It's probably my second favorite Gym Leer theme to the... I'm trying to think what other Gym Leer themes are as good. Oh yeah, the Orish Gym Leer theme, definitely. That's just... that theme is just extremely good. The Black and White 2 remix of this has got here? I haven't... I actually haven't heard that. I'll look it up after this run, after I finish my run, David. Alright, so now we'll do even more shopping. And this shop will get repels, so we can finally not have to worry about encounters. And right here. And I'll also get a couple of, whoops, I'll get a couple of super potions here. And you don't strictly need these, but I just get these for safety. And also for sections where I might need to heal to full for certain, for certain fights. I bought five propels specifically. In older routes, you would only buy four, but because we're, but because of this route we're doing, we have to go through an extra bit of grass. Um, we have we need a repel course in order to not get a bunch of encounters. So we got so I got an extra repel there from old compared to older routes for that reason. It also means I don't have to worry about messing up no encounter movement or something. So that's good. Thank you. Alright, so this is... Or, right here, we get introduced to the evil team of the game, and that is Team Galactic. They have some pretty odd shenanigans going on, and you'll see what that is in about a few minutes, in about four minutes or so. But for now, we'll be doing this easy double battle. And we can take care of both of these Pokemon one hit, but if... Turtwig uses Absorb on one of these Pokemon, that's also fine because that helps us get, or helps us with these embers that we have to use. And right there we just, it, it 
just got level 14, which will make us well to want to go after this battle. Alright, so hopefully this Hurtwig uses Absorb. And uses Tackle, which is as good, if not better, because it does a third of the Zubat's health, so we can just go with Ember. If he uses Absorb, it, that's fine also, but we just need that Turbig basically to do damage, at least some damage, before we use Ember on Pokemon hits. Because that first one, which is a Wurmple, we can one-shot. With the Zubat, we need a little bit of damage output from the Turbig. What? Dash H is evolving. The game one and the game offers us to learn Mock Puncher, but we're not gonna learn it because we don't need it for any percent. If you're doing a glitchless run though, you would learn Mock Punch, but of course we're not doing glitchless. Alright, so coming up here we'll have our first encounter with a spinner in the game. And spinners in this game are random. <laughs> There, there, unfortunately, is no real way to manipulate them. Uh, in Generation 3 speedruns, or in Generation 3 game speedruns, there is some manipulation you can do that allows you to pass by spinners 100% guaranteed. And in this game, those kind of strats don't exist, though, so we have to deal with the spinner RNG that we're dealt here. We have to try to walk past them as best as we can. There's one coming up right here. Right there, we just have to wait for her to spin. And in that case, we avoided her, so that's good. I hit her before in a practice run yesterday, so getting past her is good. Oh, I forgot to teach Rock Smash. Whoops. I meant to teach it when I did that earlier Pell menu, but it's fine. We'll be teaching over Rock Smash. Or not over Rock Smash, but over Hidden Power, because because we no longer need Hidden Power. We only really needed it for that gym battle with Rorik, and that's it. Yeah. By the way, anytime the Chimchar appears on screen, I want to see some dash H's, whether it's using an HM or in a battle. And I accidentally hit that spinner, so. <laughs> This spinner is an easy spinner though, because it's all grass type. Because all the Pokemon this spinner has is grass types, and or are grass types, and we're fire types, so we can just kill them with thunder in one shot. Down. And hopefully not hit this bug catcher. In fact, I'll wait here so I don't accidentally hit him. Alright, so we'll talk to this little girl because Team Galactic has basically kidnapped their father and trapped him in the Windworks. So we have to go rescue our father by feeding a few more Galactic grunts. Now I'm picking up this Petra Berry here because there will be a fight in a few minutes here where. I could potentially be poisoned from one of the Pokemon that the trainer has. So having Petchberry, of course, instantly gets rid of the, any poison that's put on me. So I can just... So I'll equip that. So I'll equip the Petchberry before that fight. And these next two fights are easy as well, like with the spinner hit earlier. It's the first two Pokemon will take a one-shot with Ember. And the first Pokemon on the next fight will take two hits with Ember. Also Dash H.
first fight done, we'll be doing the second fight in a second, and this is where the Pokemon in this fight, I believe is a Zubat, will take two hits to kill, remember? If I'm remembering correctly, it's a Zubat. Yeah, it's a Zubat. Alright. By the way, with this Chimchar, I was originally planning to name it John Cena. <laughs> in all caps, but I think that age is better. those two fights, there's something I want to point out. Um, usually the plot in these Pokemon games is some evil corporation does evil corporation things and tries to take over the world. In this case, Team Galactic wants to take over the galaxy, purportedly, and take over the universe. And the way they do that is with honey. I don't know why they need honey of all things for their evil plans, but you know, hashtag just galactic things. I guess they had a very limited budget, I suppose. And I don't need this potion, but I'm gonna pick it up just in case. And with this run, we shouldn't really run out of healing items by any means at all. But of course, there are a few fights potentially later on if we go south. How is everyone? I'm doing pretty good, Pro Paper. I am running this broken Pokemon game. We'll see what I mean by broken when we get to the one hour mark. There we go. This is the first and only fight in the run besides this next one we're about to do after this fight. Where we'll be using Rock Smash. After that we won't really need it. I went to get a Snorlax from the honey trees. Well, true. I guess that's how that honey fits in, but it doesn't make sense otherwise. Oh my god, the chat right now. <laughs> anyway, I'll be healing up for this next fight and equipping the Petchberry that I mentioned earlier that I got earlier. Because the first Pokemon in the fight, which is a Zubat, has the potential to poison me if he decides to use a poisoning move. And in that case, that's Spinner hit me. But this is another easy fight where it's a one shot with Ember. Most of these spinners that I hit are easy one shots or two shots, so doesn't waste a whole bunch of time, but there's one spinner on the next route that could potentially waste me a ton of time if I hit him. So I'm hoping I don't hit him. Because I hit him in my PD, so I want to get my revenge. Why'd I use Rock Smash? Seriously, why'd I use Rock Smash? <laughs> Oops. And I got poisoned immediately. Wow. <sighs> I got poisoned even before the next fight. Wow. That has never happened before. I usually don't blank out and use Rock Smash instead of Ember on this Cascoon. <laughs> you don't need Rock Smash, so we're gonna not burn it. Also, Dash H. <laughs> I don't have antidotes, so. Actually, no, I need to use that Petchberry to heal my poison, because I'm currently poisoned right now. So I basically need to hope I'm not poisoned on the next fight. Check I use it. Gen 4 menus are hard, by the way. <laughs> to heal a bit more. There we go. Alright, so because I ended up having to use my Petchberry there instead of Fuller for the next fight, I'm actually going to save for this next fight. Even though it wastes time because I don't want to get poisoned. So I'm just saving there in case. When your brain teams up with RNG to screw you over. <laughs> yeah, my brain is not playing nice today. Neither is RNG.
Alright, so the way this fight will go is I will use two embers to kill, or I think one ember actually, to kill this first Zubat. And afterwards there will be a Perugly. And the goal with the Perugly is to get a defense fall with this first Rock Smash. Because that allows us to skip using Leer to lower its defense. Saving a lot of data, yeah. It's I have one Pokemon in my party. That's a lot of data to load. That's a lot of data to save. And I did not two shots so now. It's fine. I'll just use scratch to finish it. Alright, so we didn't get poison, so I guess that save I did earlier was unnecessary. <laughs> we need to save and quit anyway later on for the glitch I'll be doing. Oh should also dash eight dash H. Alright, so let's hope we get a... Oh. I... He used fake out, so I got flinched. Which is fine. Just, I just need to get a defense ball with this rock smash. Ideally. Rock defense ball, please. No, we didn't get it, so we have to use Leer. That's unfortunate. Use Faint Attack again, which is good, and we just kill the Perugly now with the second Rock Smash. Cool. Wasn't exactly prepared for that because I accidentally got poisoned before the fight, but we'll be fine. I improvised and it worked out. Well, I, what are you gonna, are, am I gonna get into Blaze? Uh, yeah. There's a fight later on where I'll aim to be in Blaze, but if I don't get it, it's not that much of a difference. Like, I waste one turn, but it's not detrimental to the run to the point where I can't finish it. That was a little too clinch. <laughs> yeah, I was pulling it a bit close there by accidentally getting poisoned before the fight, but we got there. So upcoming is, there's one particular spear that I want to try to avoid, because if I hit him, I waste two minutes. So, let's hopefully avoid him. Although I probably just jinxed it in that case. Whatever. Alright, so I want to heal full there for this next section and use a repel. Alright, so you'll see a spinner on the right there. That's this hiker we want to avoid. No! Well, I hope you guys enjoy this two minute time loss. <laughs> The reason it's a two minute time loss is because, while these Pokemon aren't easy to defeat because they take two Rock Smashes each to kill, Rock Smash is not very powerful, or no, take each Pokemon taking two hits to kill wastes a ton of time because of how slow the Gen 4 animations are, or how slow the Gen 4 engine is, rather. So it'll take basically a while to kill all these guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I swear it's the cur it's a curse. It's a curse. <laughs> well the good thing is we might have Flame Meal for a future fight because of this. Because we'll probably gain an extra level from this. That's the one fight I did not want to hit because it wastes so much time that I hit it anyway. <laughs> That's Pokemon in a nutshell when you run these games. Spinner's just randomly killing your run at some point. <laughs> Here, that's fine, just so long as he doesn't damage me more. One last Pokemon, we can do it, guys. <laughs> At least I get to listen to this Baller Battle theme. Yeah, that's the plus side, because the trainer theme in this game is very, very good. <laughs> and that, in that case, actually, it's a one hit. So we're done with this fight. Two minutes lost. But whatever. <laughs> I'll still be underestimate, and that's why I'm aiming for, honestly. 
So now we'll go through the rest of the route and go to Eternal Forest. And the, thankfully, unlike that spinner we just passed, or hit earlier, the rest of the spinners and walk, walking trainer in that last case are really easy to avoid. And using as many rock smashes as I did there doesn't matter because in this section we get we get a full restoration after each fight, so we'll be fine. Alright, so this fight is straightforward. We'll be spamming Ember for a lot of it. Uh, there's a particular Pokemon in the fight that can cause it to really go south. And it's this Pokemon that you'll be seeing on the left in a second here. There we go, the Pachirisu that last Brianna just sent out. The reason it's so bad is because it can spam Spark, which of course has a chance to paralyze us, and... And it can also use Bide and kill us in the fight if we, decide, if we try to damage it to get rid of it. Basically, it's just a huge jerk and uses a spark fly and can paralyze us, yada yada yada. So yeah, but I employ a strat where I kill all the bugs beforehand, because in this fight, with this Beautifly, or, or with this Pokemon here, the Beautifly, it has Gust, and that's super effective against us and can do a ton of damage, so I'm gonna get rid of the Beautifly right, right away. And ideally, the chance he repeatedly uses Egg Bomb on Petrisu to get some damage off of it. Alright, so we got Flame Wheel early, which is nice. We teach him over Ember, because Flame Wheel is much more powerful than Ember. Alright, in that case, he used Spark, so hopefully he doesn't paralyze us. And in that case, it didn't. Chansey is also not very helpful in this fight, because it loves to spam Soft Boil instead of using an attacking move like Egg Bomb. It's really dumb. But the, the AI in this game is just dumb in general. <laughs> in that case, he targeted Chansey, that's fine. And in that case, Chansey didn't miss Egg Bomb. Even, even when it uses Egg Bombs, it just sometimes loves to miss. And it just repeatedly misses Egg Bomb. <laughs> It wasn't too big of a deal there, because we had Flame Wheel for the Pachiri suit anyway, but... The chance he can be a bit annoying on that fight. Now, we'll be doing this fight as a double battle. We can do it as two separate single battles, but doing it as a double battle is slightly faster. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? Wait, what? Are you kidding me? Wait, what? Hold on. Uh, I'll look at it during this upcoming section, but what the heck? Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon of all games. Unless you're just playing with me or something. I actually looked up during this fight since I'm just, just going through stuff right now. Ultra Moon. I'll just search that really quick. There's a Pokemon Direct right now. Okay, well... Uh, I'll wait until afterwards, but... Well, I... Honestly, since it's just an in-progress thing, I'll have to take what you say with a grain of salt for now. And these next couple of sections, by the way, are pretty chill sections where we'll be one-shotting everything because our Timchar is so good. So while we're in that section, we can talk about stuff. Or while we're in those sections, we can talk about stuff. Including the Pokemon game that was just mentioned in chat. The Ultra Sun Ultra Moon game, apparently. Was that the only thing that was announced, or was there more? 
Or is it just Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? Yeah, like I said, though, this is a sh boring section where I'll be one showing everything so you can talk to me in chat. Was there anything else? A new Pokemon Tekken and whatnot, guys. Oh, yeah, Pokemon Tekken. Anything besides Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Ultra Sun Moon, and the Pokémon tournament? Was there anything else besides that, or was that it? Gold Silver from the VC, nice. The question is, when will there be Ruby and Sapphire for VC? Oops, I'm bumping into rocks. <laughs> Obviously a pro speedrunner right here. You just sent Hard Rocker. Looking at right now. Oh, I see. Okay. November 17th. Alrighty. Are these sequels or remakes? Is my question, though. Because with the names, they sound like remakes almost. Like how with like with like like how the Kanto remakes were named Fire Red and Leaf Green, that kind of thing. Oh, they're sequels! Wow, <laughs> nice. Well, still so moving my favorite games casually, and so that'll be nice. Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon. I was expecting Diamond Pearl remakes, but this is definitely something I did not expect. <laughs> Ultra from Ultra Beast, yeah, that makes sense. Hey dude, spoilers for Sun and Moon, jeez. People watching the stream may have not played that game. In three months, oh, so in September, okay. Remake on the same console would be weird, yeah. I mean, if they were making a remake, I guess they could make port to Switch or something. Like it was originally rumored to be on. The question, was there a trailer? Was there a trailer for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? Or was there just like the announcement that these games were coming out? Because there is a trailer, I want to see it. I'll also be doing the gym leader right after this fight. There's something with that fight that I want to explain. There was a trailer? Nice, I'll look at it. How did a DS game work on a Switch? I just let Nintendo do their thing and see how it goes. See how it goes. Ten seconds of trailer. Boo! I want like I wanted like at least one minute trailer. Anyway, we're going to the gym leader now since we have all those boring fights out of the way. And the fight will go much like the trainer fights that you just saw me do. But on the last Pokemon of this fight, which is a Roserade. I want that Roserade to put me at a specific health for an upcoming fight in the next section. So we'll see what that Roserade does.
He was sandwiched between Pokemon Tournament and stuff, yeah. Don't know why you're promoting Pokemon Tournament of all things when it's literally their least popular Pokemon game, but. <laughs> you know, that's just what they decided to do with it. As long as they announce the new Pokemon game, I'm happy with it. Alright, so let's see what the Rush Raid does. Because I do this first swing wheel, and then I do the second hit in the second here. Poison Sting. Nah, it's not that. He barely did anything with that, so I can't do the strat. Alright, so what was supposed to happen there, he was supposed to get me to about half of my health there, which would have been 33 health. And the reason for that is because I want the last Pokemon on an upcoming fight, which is a Skunk Tank, to hit me below half health, or hit me below one third health, which of course would get me into Blaze. And that would allow me to skip using Leer to lower its defense, like with the fight with Mars earlier. I mean, you know, since this is actually echoing Gen 5, because Gen 5 had sequels as well, with Black 2, White 2. So I guess in a way, that's it's cool that they're doing sequels again. Alright, so we're supposed to get the bike at this point, but the person that's giving us the bike is, once again, being captured by Team Galactic, so we have to go through another Team Galactic slog. Where, much like the gym that I just did, it's a lot of one trying everything with Flame wheel, so Shaq can once again talk to me during this section until I get to Jupiter. And I'll also be teaching Cut here with the first and only Cut Bush in the run. Because we don't play that much of the game in this run. <laughs> Yeah, let's take a look at the trailer right now on just doing this. I got faked out, but it's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't do much damage to us. Also, if you have anything to ask about this speedrun, you can ask me while we're going through this section as well. You don't have to limit it to just Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon stuff.
I just looked in the DJ and Dash Discord and people were spamming the Discord talking about the Pokemon stuff that was just announced. Switch game Pokémon DX. <laughs> yeah, like I said, Pokémon is their least popular Pokémon game. As far as I know, not many people play it at all now, so why did they even make a another Pokémon game? <laughs> I say that as a person that has played Pokémon, so... And by play Pokémon, I mean only play the demo. <laughs> Last fight for Jupiter done, and now we'll be fighting Jupiter. And this fight is pretty straightforward, like this section as well, because we spam embers to kill everything. But this last Pokemon takes usually takes one ember to, or not one ember, but one leader to lower its defense. But if we got these other strat, we would have been able to just skip on use leader entirely. But in this case, we have to use leader because. Because of course we can get in blaze. I'm just gonna flame wheel this first Pokemon, which is a Zubat. bat. And this next one I'll do one leer, or not one leer, but one flame wheel, use one leer, and then do another flame wheel to kill it. That could be bad, but that shouldn't be too terrible. As long as he doesn't do anything bad to Whoa, we actually healed? Wow. That's actually surprising. Well, this next hit should kill. And then we'll be fine. Gang poison is kind of bad. But as long as we kill him, there we go. The dangerous thing about the Skun Tank, by the way, is that you can use Smokescreen, and anyone who's played Pokemon before knows just how bad Smokescreen is, because it's essentially a Pocket Sand 2.0, and we don't want to deal with that. But thankfully we didn't get that. At least I don't think. I wasn't probably... Was, if he did use it, I probably wasn't paying attention. Alright, so now that was pretty much the last boss of the run. You might be wondering why that's the case, but you'll see in about a minute about five minutes from now because we'll be doing a glitch in this game that, that you can do in all the gen 4 games actually and it's called tweaking and i'll briefly explain how tweaking works um the entirety of the overworld map and all the gen 4 games are made up of these 32 by 32 squares and there are intersections between these squares that are called the load lines and doing specific movement patterns on these load lines Causes the causes some very funky things to happen to the overworld map, and you'll see what that is when we get to Duke Life City in a few minutes. But first, you have to get the Explorer kick here, because otherwise, a, an NPC will block us from leaving the city. I mean, he's all enthusiastic about teaching us about the underground, but we just don't care. We're just gonna leave him here to be lonely, because no one wants to learn about the underground. I get so lonely sometimes. Well, too bad, old man. And I am taking damage from poison now, but it eventually goes away when you get to one health. So I'll just heal up after that, in case I accidentally hit an optional in this upcoming section on Cycling Road. And the nice thing about... I shall just heal now, I guess. And the nice thing about the... Whoops. Okay, my cursor was on closed bag. Nice. Uh, in Gen 4, the nice thing with the bike is it actually has two different speeds, a Gear 3 and Gear 4. Gear 3 is the slower one, Gear 3 is the faster one, and 
for most movement we want to be in gear 4, but for the tweak, for the glitch that we'll be doing, which as my, which as, as I explained is called tweaking, um, we must be in gear 4, gear 3, 4, because it makes it easier. The poison thing on screen, the poison screen, screen effect right now might shake me off, but I think I'll be fine. Alright, so we, we did it. Got past that cycling road. Thankfully, uh, I thankfully I didn't hit an optional there, but I always think I'll hit an optional on that route somehow, so, I'll, so I end up being very careful with my movement. See there, the poison just went away. And you don't need to worry about that because we're already done all the fights that we need to do, so we don't need to worry about finding any more Pokemon or trainers. This is the section where we need the slash repel. Good of you to join me, by the way, Raquel, because we're about to break the game. <laughs> oh, jolly. Oh, yeah. Alright, so what what you do to break this game, it's really simple. You just do that bit of movement there, and it load in part of another map, as you can probably see right now. And we'll... And we're going to save and quit. Because when you do a tweak, one of the things that you have to do to reload the map is... Or no. The thing you have to do once you do a tweak is to reload the map, and there's several ways you can reload the map once you've done a tweak, and one, and that's one of the ways you can do it that I just did there, which is saving and quitting. Alright, and miraculously, I am inside this building right here, and we can enter from the inside, which makes sense, and now we're out of bounds. Just don't question it. <laughs> Alright, so now we're in this black outbounds area that is aptly named the void and in this void area there's specific paths we have to take to get to where we want to be because when you take certain paths in this outbounds area it causes some in-game events to trigger and there's one particular in-game event that's very beneficial for speedrunning that we want to try to hit and you'll see what that is in a few seconds and after this not after I the game this time, but on the next time I save and quit. Just move one step more to the left, and we're there. And by the way, this is ho totally how you're supposed to play Diamond and Pearl. I'm not breaking the game at all. This is normal, don't worry. <laughs> and all of a sudden we're talking to Rowan and Cynthia that you may, may or may not have seen earlier again. <laughs> Just don't question it. So you might be wondering where we are right now. Oh, by the way, I'm in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> time is coming up in a few seconds. Uh, time. <laughs> so I should probably explain what just happened there. Uh, <laughs> As I, as, I, as I mentioned when I was talking about the void, uh, doing certain paths in that black void of nothingness, essentially, it causes certain in-game events to trigger, but there just so happens to be a path we can take in this void area that triggers the cutscene for the Hall of Fame. Don't know how it works, a lot of other runners could probably explain it more technically, but <laughs> that's the, the gist of it. So it was nice doing that run. It was nice talking with Chet. Thanks for having me. So Thank you, you for running this wonderful <laughs> mess of a broken at all gate Yeah, not not broken at all whatsoever. 
You can come in whenever. Shout out to Dash H. Yeah, Dash H, yeah. Um, I'll join in too. Oops. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for me. You can cut me whenever. Alrighty, in this case. After the intermission.